Hi, I'm Matt Baldwin, Regional Editor for Hagadone Media Montana. First off, a huge thank you for tuning into our podcast over the past year. Your support means the world to us, and it's inspired us to dive deeper into the world of podcasts. We've got some exciting updates to share with you. You might notice a fresh look and feel to our podcast lineup. We've revamped things a bit, breaking our shows into four distinct podcasts to make your listening experience even better. First up, Interlake News Now is simply News Now. Here you'll get Taylor's headlines, Melissa's local events, and all the timely news updates you need. Sports Now is now Keeping Score, where you can stay up to speed on local prep sports. Then there's Deep Dive. This podcast is all about exploring the stories of local people, businesses, and ideas. And if you missed last summer's Maritime Mystery Series, don't worry. It's now the first season of Deep Dive. And of course, our monthly concert series, Press Play, now has its own podcast. Get ready for exclusive interviews with local musicians and all things Press Play. You can find links to all these new podcasts listed in the description of this episode. Or simply search for Daily Interlake wherever you listen to podcasts. Once again, thank you for your incredible support. If you enjoy what you hear, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave us a review. Welcome, everybody, to the Keeping Score podcast from the Daily Interlake and Hagedown Sports Network. I'm Josh Amick. This week on the Range Riders Recap, I will discuss what has gone wrong with the team since the break, what to look forward to, and how the Range Riders can get back on track before hitting the road, and as always, some new faces to the team. So let's get into it. The Range Riders opened their first home series of the second half against the Boise Hawks for a six-game series, and things did not start well. The Hawks jumped out to a 10-0 lead before the Range Riders responded with two runs, would be all they scored as they lost the game 14-2. After spending three out of the four series on the road, manager Paul Fletcher believed the team might be facing some mid-season fatigue. Let's take a listen. Right, I think we were a little tired. We've been through two weeks of heat. Um, We kind of had a letdown. We made the playoffs and everybody kind of took a deep breath. And uh, you could see it because there would be one inning. In each game, we would compete and be right in the game, right in the game, and then boom, we'd have one of those innings um, where it just kind of got away from us a little bit. In their next game, the Range Riders struggled once again, playing seven hits but didn't have any RBIs. The only run scored for the Range Riders came in the first inning on a double play that scored a run, and it was shut out the next eight innings and dropped the game 6-1. to one. Game three of the Range Riders' offense was powered by one man and one man only, J.D. McLaughlin. J.D. McLaughlin hit a solo home run and a two-run home run that scored all three runs for the Range Riders as they dropped the third game of the series 5-3. Friday was another poor performance from the offense as they only had three team hits and lost their fourth straight game and fifth overall 8-2. In game five, the Range Riders offense showed up pleading six runs, but unfortunately the Hawks scored 11 and won for the fifth straight time. The Range Riders had 13 team hits, but only three of those were for extra base hits, and they didn't homer at all. Hitting coach Stu Peterson offered advice on what some issues with the players may be. You know, I just try and tweak guys here and there, and a lot of times it's not big adjustments because you're not going to be able to make big adjustments, but it's maybe a different barrel angle. Maybe it's, you know, uh, starting a little bit earlier with a lot of our guys, not just our guys, but guys in the league. They start their load too late. Now all of a sudden the ball's on them and now that's why they end up chasing because now they're trying to speed up and play catch up rather than slowing the game down. In the final game of the series, the Range Riders were blown out 15 to three as the Hawks hit six home runs. The Range Riders hit a few home runs of their own in the fifth inning. Ben Fitzgerald hit his sixth home run of the season and newcomer Antonio Barranca hit his first home run with the team and more to come on that later. That's it for the Range Riders recap. Obviously a rough couple of weeks for the team, winning only once in their last 12 games. In my opinion, what has gone wrong with the Range Riders is a matter of who they are playing on the schedule and a lack of hitting, especially hitting for power. They opened the second half of the season on the road against the best team in the Pioneer League, and they had their moments when they were in the game, but then one huge inning would put them out of it and be all the difference. So far in the second half of the season, The team with the best record is the Boise Hawks. 
Granted, six of their 10 wins have come against the Range Riders, but they also finished the first half of the season with the fourth best record. In their series against Boise, manager Paul Fletcher alluded to the team being tired as to why their legs aren't underneath them. No legs or energy equals no stolen bases, no driving the ball out of the park or extra base hits, all categories of Range Riders baseball. Also mentioned, the Range Riders aren't hitting the ball out of the ballpark. In their first 11 games of the second half of the season, Christian Curley had homered only once, and Jaden McLaughlin had that game where he homered twice. The good news is for the Range Riders is Ben Fitzgerald homered on Sunday and appears to be getting healthy again, and newcomer Antonio Barranca hit his first home run of the season, which leads me to this week's edition of In Case You Missed It. After the tough start to the second half, the team needed some reinforcements, not only because of the grueling schedule, but the team needs a spark. Pitchers Cam Cohen and Tyler Clayton were both placed on the injury list, which led the Range Riders to signing pitcher Ricky Tibbet. Tibbet played at San Diego State and UC Irvine, and his lone appearance with the Range Riders so far, he threw two and one-third shutout innings against Boise on Sunday. They also signed River Orsak, who played at Lamar University in Texas, and in three games with the team, he is three for 10. Here's what River had to say about his experience since joining the team. It's going good. Community's great. You know, people are awesome. They show up every night. Win, lose, or draw is we got we draw a good crowd, and I'm not used to something like that being from a smaller school, and it's just awesome to be part of. Antonio Barranca has been a welcome addition to the team as well. In two games with the team, he is three for five with one of those hits being a home run. Some much needed firepower for this offense as they turn their attention to Billings for a six game series on the road, looking to snap their seven game losing streak. That's it for this week's edition of the Range Riders Recap. Follow our social media pages at Daily Interlake for behind the scenes Range Riders content and exclusive interviews. For the Keeping Score podcast, I'm Josh Amick, and until next time, take care.